Out in the dream time stalks a monster long and fat and slow. Its hide is the color of the night painted with stars, and its body is longer than four warriors laying head to toe with three mammoth legs jutting out of each side. And atop that body is the head of an enormous toad. It is the Hui, terror of the Tungala, and it hungers. This tale is brought to you by CuriosityStream, the world's first streaming service dedicated to the lifelong quest to learn, explore, and understand. Check it out for yourself at curiositystream.com slash extra credits for a free month. Once, the Tungala River, which most maps now call the Murray, was a place of peace and plenty, where the water rat tribe could fish and hunt and live with ease. But then, one day, along its gentle waters was seen a sight both monstrous and strange. A great frog-headed lizard, long and fat and slow, prowling the banks. It gazed at the humans with a savage, hungry look in its eyes, its great tongue flicking out, tasting the air, smelling their scent. The people of the water rat tribe fled back to camp, though at first, the danger did seem slight. The Hui, this lizard who skulked along the banks of the Tungala, was ponderous and slow. Each leg took its time rising and falling, rising and falling. So slow was it that despite its size, even a child could outrun it. But then one day, a group of the water rat people didn't check in. Scouts were sent to their campsite, but when they got there, they found only the great heaving tracks of the Hui and the red evidence of the terrors of the night before. Not a man, woman, or child was left. And this was only the first camp. For the Hui was slow, but in the dead of night, when the water was black and the people were sound asleep, it could move without a whisper, without a noise louder than the wind in the reeds. And so, slowly, silently, it would come up on these sleeping camps and slide its great maw around prone bodies and swallow them whole, one by one, or sometimes a mother and a child at the same time. It would drag them silently down its dark gullet, never waking a sleeper. It would eat this way 30 to 60 people at a time. And those it couldn't digest, it would trap inside of its great mouth and carry them back to its cave near the Tongala that extended miles and miles underground, saving them for a future meal. On hot days, it would sun itself outside of this cave and in its basking, end up piling great mounds of sand that can still be seen to this day, for they are the sand hills that border the Tongala. But when it had just had a meal, it would retreat to the very back of its cave to sleep, and for a while, the water rat tribe would have peace. The toll it was taking on the water rat tribe was horrific. Mothers, sons, fathers, daughters, all had been lost to the insatiable hunger of the Hui. So a council was called to discuss the safety of the tribe. Their leader stood and said, We are a small tribe and every day we diminish. We will vanish from this earth if we do not depart for a distant country. To stay means to be devoured one by one until there are none of our people left to carry on our traditions. So I'll leave the question to you. What shall we do? Then one of the eldest of the tribe stood up and said, I am far too old for making long journeys. And before the Hui came, the Tungala provided us all we needed. Rather than run, we must face this danger. And to do that, we need the assistance of other tribes. The people murmured in agreement. And so, as soon as the next dawn broke, every member of the water rat tribe, from the youngest child to the oldest elder, went out to gather kindling. And when they had enough, they built signal fires, sending up great clouds of smoke into the sky, knowing that other tribes would come to their aid when they saw the broad plumes of smoke climbing over the horizon. With that done, many went out to hunt, fish, and bake mussels to prepare to welcome the other tribes while a few of the bravest went out to scout the whereabouts of the Hui. But the scouts could find the Hui nowhere along the Tongala. At last mustering their courage, they approached the Hui's cave, but there was still no sight of the beast. Then, one of them found his tracks. Deep, six-legged tracks that ran right into his lair. Now the scouts knew where he was. And more than that, they knew that with his slow steps, it would take him a full week to reach the back of the Great Cave where then he would sleep. 
So they returned to their camp at dawn to see the other tribes striding in, arrayed in force with stone axes, spears, and war clubs. And there was a great feast and dancing, and afterwards the scouts told the tribes what they had learned. The next day, every person brought a small bundle of tinder, giving it to the most valiant among them to set halfway down the Hui's cave. Then they lit it and fled, lighting another great fire at the cave's entrance. The heat and the smoke woke the great beast, and the silent creature roared. For six days, it bellowed, screaming so loudly that its rage could be heard, emanating from the cave mouth miles away. Then on the seventh day, dazed, it stumbled out of the cave and into the sunlight. And at that moment, the tribes descended upon it with axe and spear and club. The monster fought and the blood flowed, but at last it was overwhelmed, gasping its last breath on the banks of the Tongala. The monster had been vanquished. The tribe was saved. But to this day, when the night wind blows into a cave, the sound is said to be the breath of the Hui as it lay dying. <laughs> I'm just kidding. There are no caves around here. Oh, oh, is it behind me? <laughs> Come on, everybody. I'm not going to fall for that. Our motto at Extra Credits is because learning matters. So we got really excited when Curiosity Stream, with their love for learning, sponsored this tale. Because they have over 2,400 documentaries and nonfiction titles spanning topics from across science, nature, history, and technology. Featuring folks like Jane Goodall, Stephen Hawking, and my personal favorite who I happened to run into in an NYC movie theater one time and totally didn't embarrass myself in front of, Michio Kaku. What up, next world? And you can get access to all of this geeky goodness for only $2.99 a month. But if you head to curiositystream.com slash extra credits right now and use the code extra credits, you can get your first month absolutely free. Oh, and if you happen to see Mr. Kaku, please tell him I'm sorry and I owe him some new popcorn. Legendary thanks to patron Kyle Murgatroyd. <laughs>